Are you prepared for the knowledge age? And my topic is more about multimedia types of things. Um, but uh, let's see, some loose ends include, I'm going to talk a little bit about knowledge bases, which are learning-led learning. I uh, get the best knowledge, the right person, just the right time. That's, that's a definition for performance support, if I've ever heard one, right? It's also the mantra for knowledge management. And we're not just looking for repositories of documents, but we're looking for those knowledge nuggets, which is the best knowledge, the right person, the right time. And it's generally learn a lot, and it will also come under the topic or category of performance support. And it's for complex knowledge, but not the same complexity that George was talking about. In other words, if you're going to be expert at delivering proper learning, you have to understand that the world is kind of on a spectrum. And you have to figure out where on that spectrum does my problem exist, or does my learning situation exist. Then you reach in your pocket, look at your little toolkit, and say, oh, well, the proper solution to that is right here. So there's no easy solution to this. If you don't understand that spectrum of, for instance, yours was very much uh, tools-oriented, hard, three-dimensional kinds of stuff. Uh, if I'm teaching a concept like strategic planning, I'm not going to be using a three-dimensional concept. I'm going to use something more like the simulations, for instance, which is more intellectual. And if it's a very complex strategic planning thing, like uh, the center of gravity analysis, then I would lean towards the learning agent. So you have to decide what is the nature of your problem and then reach for the proper tool. And uh, well, I'll, so that ends that little section of it. And I'll show you what knowledge bases are just to give you a sample of it. Then I'm going to talk about this concept of just in case versus just in time and teach you a new technology that's available here locally. It's not quite yet in the shrink wrap version, but it's what is coming that we call just for you learn. And the metrics are not butts and seats as you're used to measuring or course completion. Those aren't the proper metrics. The only real metric is was our performance improved and at what cost. And then I'll dab a little bit in interactive video. We'll talk about self-paced and the, the cost of video is way down. A camera that had that, you see that camera sitting back up there? The one with a little red light on it? Uh, that kind of competency, or, I'm sorry, that kind of uh, quality was probably about $50,000 10 years ago when it was analog video. And today that camera is around, lists around 5,000. I think we even got up a little less than 5,000. And it used to be that video studio where you did all your editing was a very senior person who had 10 to 15 years of experience and had hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of equipment to handle three quarter inch beta tapes and all of that stuff. And today, uh, a decent PC with some software on it can do just as good a job, maybe even better. So the cost is way down. And then the last topic I'll talk about is virtual video classes, which are becoming available. So let's get into it real quickly. What's that? Uh, knowledge is fling. We've heard that a few times this morning. And one of the problems is the knowledge capture and retention issue. And here's an interesting quote I picked up. Uh, it's really, no, I'm sorry. I thought it was recently, but I just refound it recently. It's, it dates back uh, three years ago. The old age is a boom to the human race. Boom to the human race. It wasn't until people started living to old age that humans gained competitive advantage to ensure their success. And the research has found that back around 30,000 years ago, the population shifts were enough so that enough old people were surviving. There was a dramatic jump in longevity, and that corresponded to the sudden explosion in modern behavior. So the research speculated to pass on the knowledge to new generations. This research proves a simple explanation, which there is now concrete evidence that modern humans are older and wiser, and yet we have this problem. Let's not lose the wisdom of the older retiring generation. And whether we capture it in performance support systems or learning agents or in simulations or in knowledge bases, which I'm best just about to show you, we need to do that. And one of the pressing issues, it's a KM issue, a knowledge management issue, but it's a learning issue, is what are we going to do with all this expertise that's about to retire, not only from the US government, from organizations around the world. This is a characteristic of every developed country. They all went through the Second World War and all have the same demographic shift. So, wait a second, I have a little cartoon as well. Not as good as some of James, but uh, the human capital is our most important asset. Consider this. I say we sell them, by golly. <laughs> First is an example of a knowledge base. This is a knowledge base where the knowledge is very precise. If someone comes in with work-related alcohol use, which is a work breakdown structure of the kinds of things that this type of uh, physician security advisor uh, might experience. And you click on that, the right hand screen gives you a diagnosis. The system guides decision making by asking the right questions. And if you check the boxes, then the answer appears right there immediately. And the answer to the prognosis is 
decisions are faster, better, and more consistent. That kind of gets at the same statistics you're looking at, Don, trying to reduce making a decision, or in this case, solving a problem, from taking all day down to being able to do it in minutes. And very importantly, in our litigious society today, maybe in some of these positions, being able to do it quite correctly so that you don't end up with months and months of litigation after that, because to reduce the job from, what, one week down to two days, and then turn out and spend four months of litigation wouldn't solve the problem. Now this is a kind of a knowledge base where the knowledge is very specific. If these are the characteristics, that's your answer. There's other types of knowledge bases that are not so specific. You can't give the precise answer. What you hope to do is provide the best knowledge to that person just at the time they need it so they can make an informed decision. Um, and this is a tool that I, in fact, personally was involved in the design of for the, for the Department of Defense back in 1994. We call it at that time a process management tool, but it's today we call it a knowledge base. And it's exactly the same other one. It's a word breakdown structure of all the activities that comprise this thing, whatever this thing is. In this case, it's the methodology to do KM, which is create a learning organization. And if that is not enough, the what is this and who does it, if that's not enough uh, knowledge for you, you press the button down here called references and you op open up the metaphor that we call the books of knowledge. And there are the books on the shelf that represent the kinds of knowledge, the nuggets of knowledge that a person needs to help them do the best possible thing on that job, given that particular situation they're facing. So this isn't quite as precise as the former knowledge base, which says, this is what you should do. This one says, here's all what the corporation can provide to you of our documented knowledge at this moment in time. But one of the books off to the side of the shelf here is, and then if it isn't in the knowledge base, here's, you should, here's who you should go to, because they'll probably be able to help you. So go to the knowledge base first. If it's not there, then go to these experts that are pointed to you, uh, that, are, that the knowledge base points you to. So that's the concept of knowledge base. Now let's talk about this just-in-case training uh, converting to just-in-time learning. I like to use the example of a brick-and-mortar, face-to-face instructor standing in front of the class, and I couldn't get the basketball to sit in his arms there. But what I'm saying is all of us as instructors have this responsibility to take this huge body of knowledge and compress it into a course. And I'm depicting the course by something of that size, a basketball size. And then, uh, Lisa, right? Lisa, I'm sorry. I toss it out to you just in case you need it. I don't know if you can hear me, I'm standing over here, but I happen to walk six months from now. How much of that are you going to remember six months from now, Lisa? Not very much, five or 10%. So if we deliver training and the people don't turn around <coughs> next Monday and start using it, it was just in case training, which is bad news. So we're trying to move towards much closer to the time of need by various technologies. And one is just in time learning. And that looks more like this. It's probably electronic. Um, it could be uh, delivered by video, and it's a little golf ball size nugget, not a basketball size course. In other words, when you have a problem on a particular day next Wednesday or Thursday, uh, you don't try to find some basketball size course you can go to, or probably you don't have the budget for it. Also, it's probably not offered every day. Uh, it's maybe a month or two from now before you can take it. So instead, you go into your knowledge base, and in the knowledge base is this little nugget, this little 15 minute or 40 minute course e-learning, or it could be a 3D if it's a, that, that the nature. It depends on the nature of the subject that you have to learn. If it's how to take a gun apart, it could be the 3D of how to take a gun apart. If it's a how do you do change management, well then there's a couple of basic steps here. We'll get you started in change management. So that's just in case and just in time to learn. Let me just give you an oversimplification, just for those of you who haven't been involved in interactive video, just to make sure you understand the basic concept. I'm going to take four little video vignettes, and interactive video is non-linear, but I'm going to say it's, it's actually essentially linear, but I don't want to nitpick over these terms. After you see this diagram, you'll understand what I mean by it. I'm going to take a person and say, this picks up the course or the module. And I stick a person in and say, hey, watch this video. And at the end of the little video vignette, maybe this is a 20 minute course comprised of, uh, let's say 20 minutes worth of video, comprised of four vignettes, five minutes each. So I've just had you watch the first vignette, and I ask you a few questions about it. And if you got the questions right, well, let's say I'm hoping my questions are perceptive enough to know that you really understood it. So uh, I will reinforce, just in case you guessed intelligently on my questions, but in any event, I'll reinforce you and advance you to the next video segment. 